Hey, I'm L, and this is my pet rat, Sweet Potato. Welcome back to L Cartoons. I always struggled with feeling guilty for the dumbest crap, man. Before I get into my stories, my sweet potato got into a car accident recently. The good boy was just minding his own business when all of a sudden he was rear-ended by a rat in his class known as Evil Potato. Luckily, he did not get injured. Nothing a few kisses couldn't fix. But if he wasn't in preschool and he was on the real road, or if you've ever been injured, there's luckily steps you can take. And that brings us to today's sponsor, It's Morgan & Morgan. They are America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and are here to fight for people that get injured. So they have attorneys that focus on every area of personal injury. Workplace injuries, slip and fall, car accidents, nursing home abuse, medical malpractice, and so much more. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you don't just get one lawyer assigned to your case. You get an entire dedicated legal team. Case investigators, paralegals, customer case specialists, all focused on maximizing your settlement. Insurance has an army fighting to <laughs> offer you the yeah. least amount possible. While Morgan & Morgan fight to get you the full and fair compensation that you deserve. And the best part about it is that you do not have to pay a dime to this team unless they win your case. What? That means no upfront costs, sign up fees, all calls, meetings, texts, all time and effort they put into your case is completely free of charge unless they actually win your case for you. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You could submit a claim at forthepeople.com slash lcartoon or by dialing pound law, that's pound 529 on your phone. Big thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring my video. And now, back to it. My guilt started with Jeffrey. Jeffrey the giraffe. So I had this specific little crew I used to play with all the time. Franklin, Patrick, Flippy the dog, <coughs> Kelly, Rocky, which Rocky wasn't even a stuffed animal. That was just a rock from outside. And Corduroy. But there was one particular stuffed animal that became my life. So once I got Jeffrey, I guess you can say, Jeffrey was now kind of being prioritized. I mean, I straight up ate dinner with Jeffrey. So that night I went to go to bed and I was like, good night, Jeffrey. And then just before I was about to shut my eyes, I noticed Franklin staring at me and looked so sad. Come here, buddy. Problem was, it wasn't just Franklin. Wait, I... They saw me kiss both of them. If I kiss Franklin, I gotta kiss... I gotta kiss everybody. I didn't want anyone to feel unimportant. So I grabbed the entire crew and put them all right next to me. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Wait a minute. I realized the ones on the shelf saw this whole thing go down. So I got up and I kissed them all. And then I felt bad putting them back on the shelf. So I took everybody back to my bed so they can all feel special. And it was kind of claustrophobic, but at least I'm not a bad person. Good night. And just when you thought it was over, I realized. I have an entire closet full of stuffed animals that I've been neglecting. I stayed up till 1 a.m. just kissing all of my stuffed animals goodnight. Okay. And of course, I couldn't put them back in the closet. Um, L? Is that a rock? <coughs> So I ended up doing this for months. I slept with like 900 stuffed animals every night because I felt too guilty. And so I literally got physically sick from this, okay? <laughs> No, seriously. Eventually, over the months, I ended up getting like really bad allergies. All I know is my nose was just constantly stuffy and I didn't know why. My mom took me to the allergist and like we couldn't figure it out. And he goes, you don't happen to have a lot of uh, plushies or stuffed animals, a lot of accumulated stuffed animals around your room or something, do you? What are you talking about? I'm just asking a question. I love them all equally. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Too many stuffed animals in an isolated room can, can collect an enormous amount of dust. That's probably what's causing this. Are you saying I have to get rid of some stuffed animals for the sake of my health? Yes. What a shame. Hey, it's doctor's orders. So my mom made me throw them out. And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't even crying. I did kiss them all before I had to throw them in the trash can though. 
and I kept drifting. Another time when I was little, my dad was like washing the car and I was outside playing in the grass with my favorite blankie. It was a Lion King blankie. It had Simba's gigantic face on it. I loved it so much. Anyway, so we used to get a million ant houses all over our lawn. And I used to just watch these poor ants. It would take like 9,000 hours for them to carry this little crumb of food from across the lawn. I felt so bad. There's gotta be something I could do to help. So I went inside, I got a handful of the snack that smiles back, goldfish, and I crunkled it up as tight as I could in my little hand so I could make a gajillion crumbs. So I walk over to one of the ant hills and I just sprinkle a little crumb of food like right next to the hole where they live so they don't have to travel nine million hours to get a crumb from like the road. So I put the food there and I waited. And guess what happened, okay? An ant came out, looked completely shocked, and he took the food in one step. Oh my God, I felt like a freaking hero. I wonder what the ants is thinking right now. I have no idea how I'm gonna find food. My whole family's counting on me. What am I gonna do? My whole family's gonna starve. We're hopeless, we're hopeless. It's all hopeless. Ah! Holy shit. So as I'm going around doing this great service to the ant community, I didn't happen to realize that I was dragging my blankie right on top of the ant hill as I walked past it. I didn't even realize I was doing it for like literally every ant hill. And when I was done, I basically turn around and I see everything's destroyed in a trail of my blankie. I murdered all of the ants and their entire community. I'll never forget the feeling. As such a little child, the amount of doom that I felt in my heart. I wonder what the ants are thinking right now. Boy, I can't believe it, all the food. Everybody's talking about it. There's food outside of everybody's ant hills. It's so exciting. There is hope. We're saved. We're all saved. We're... Holy shit. So long story short, I freaking panicked. I was hysterically <laughs> crying. I went to go get my parents and basically I made them help me go around to every anthill and like help me rebuild them. As I'm like shedding tears, I have ants all over me and all over my blankie. My blankie deserved it. Though. So the last story, my mom brought me and my little sister, Jessica, to the mall. Oh, and Greg was there too, actually. Hi, hi Greg. Hi. We went to the mall because we needed to get winter jackets. And every time my mom brought us to the mall, we knew we got to make a wish at the fountain. That was the only reason that actually got us in the car. So my mom's like helping us try on winter jackets. Greg got stuck in one. It's so typical of Greg. And I'm just like waiting for the fountain. And as I'm waiting, I notice a little 25 cent machine with freaking parachute guys in it. And I've never I've never seen this before as a kid. This was my first time seeing little parachute men. I can only dream of getting one of these, throw it off of my balcony. I had the perfect balcony at home where I could see this man soar. I was dying to try this, okay? So after jackets, we went to the fountain to go make a wish. And I asked my mom if she can get me one of those parachute guys too. And she's like, you can use your quarter for either the fountain wish or for the parachute guy. Okay, she couldn't give me a freaking extra quarter. And obviously I'm not gonna lose a wish over this. But anyway, me and my brother always had a competition who can throw it like in the middle of like the very top part. So we threw our quarters really far. But Jessica, she got those little baby hands that just, she, uh, she didn't throw as far as I noticed. So we're getting ready to leave. My mom's putting us in our jackets. Greg gets stuck again. <laughs> Oh no, not again. So everybody seems to be distracted. I wasn't thinking. I stole Jessica's wish and I wiped her wish all over my freaking new jacket. Ran to the machine, got my little parachute guy, thanks Greg. And all I could think about was dropping him off the balcony. And once the hit was over, I was like, I stole Jessica's wish. Everything hit me. Oh my God, I stole my little sister's wish. She could have wished for something like important. World 
piece. And I took it for that. The shame. So long story short, I was hysterically crying. My guilt was ripping me to shreds. And I told my mom I stole Jessica's wish. And that we have to go back to the mall. And my mom like really did not want to go back to the mall. She's like, oh God, what am I going to do? She here? got a pot from the kitchen, filled it with water. We like sat on the floor She's and like, okay, Jessica, let's make it another wish. Like the fountain. And I'm just Jessica, make that wish that you made today. Make that same wish, make it again. Please, please. Thank you. I had problems. Oh, guilt. We don't like you. Tell me below if you can relate to any of those stories. I feel like either everyone's gonna relate to the stuffed animal one or nobody's gonna relate to the stuffed animal one. Anyway, thank you guys again for watching. And if you wanna watch more, get the popcorn out, binge them all. Also, I'm gonna start posting again on my vlog channel if anyone cares. Woo! All right, I'm gonna end this now before. Sweet potato, stop, stop. What are you doing? Strong position.